Welcome to your greatest life. And welcome to Unwinding Stress. I'm Dr. Kevin Jarita, and the big question I have for you today is what does stress do to your life, to your body, to your environment? Well, we're going to be talking about the answer to that and how do we solve that and how do we unlock and unwind our stress so we can live a better life. And today I've brought a few clients with me to talk about their experiences and their uh, challenges and their growth and things they want to share with you because they have unlocked some of their stress and of course we're all moving forward in today's world and stress is such an important topic. We have a lot of challenges every person, every family is experiencing in greater and greater ways and if we can empower you to help unlock and unwind so that you can live a more uh, effective, holistic, natural life, well then we're doing our job and and uh, we're going to be learning a lot over the next couple episodes. So I invite you to join in more as we keep going forward. But I want to introduce our current guest right now so we can talk a little bit more <laughs> in detail and give you some of the insights and uh, understandings that they've come to know working with me and some of the things I like to share and which you'll be all privy to as we move forward. I want to welcome Fernando. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, Lisa, thank you. Thank you. And so I, I did prompt them with a couple questions to get started, but we're going to let the conversation flow and see where it takes us. So the, the, the first question I want to start with is, you know, where were you? What was going on in your life that prompted you to seek care from the holistic natural variety? And then what has been the effect? What's the benefit? And we'll go back and forth. But Lisa, I'll, I'll start with you. What caused me to seek the care was, I had a few reasons. Um, one was a few physical things for mm. chiropractic care. My blood pressure was high and no one's been able to get it managed. Um, my, I had a knee issue that was going on. And then I had some mental emotional things that were causing me a lot of stress and a little bit of anxiety and thought I need to find somebody to help in a more natural way. And I had worked for a chiropractor in another state and he did a, a similar technique that you use actually the NET method. And I wanted someone that understood that and knew that. And so when I looked you up and I found that you did that, I was like, I've never, I've looked before, I've never found him. How come he showed up? So I called you right away or emailed you and mm. definitely made an appointment right away. Yeah, so what has been some of the effects of the, the NET work? This is the mind-body stress technique that uh, we can help essentially discharge or uh, release right. some of these pressures and tensions. What's been the effect in your life? Wow. Um. <laughs> I mean, there's day-by-day -day stuff and there's bigger things too. Though. Right. What has been some of the uh, benefits of it for you? Some of the benefits are, well, my blood pressure is definitely, I'm not on the medication anymore, so that's a huge yeah. thing for me. No more knee pain. Um, it's just interesting to know that the physical body also sometimes relates to other things, like your emotional stress. Sometimes you get blocked, you don't know why, you're working on something and you're trying to figure out, hey, why am I stuck here, you know, and how do I unblock it? Um, I've done this route, this route, this route. You've tried the medical route, you've tried all different things, and it just, it's, kind of this loop, this endless loop. Um, for me, the biggest thing on the emotional side was I had, and I just saw this when we, I went to your last visit, right before I said I had done a New Year's resolution last year and I called it the year of me. And I was going to do things that helped me, you know, grow and develop and love myself and, you know, set boundaries, things like that. And I came to Dr. Kevin and the one of the first things she said is, self-love and I was like how did he know that <laughs> you know it was pretty amazing and so we've worked on a lot of those emotional things that get me stuck there you know that kept me there and I've definitely overcome a lot of that well the, the beauty is and if now I'll, I'll move over to you and, and comment on some of the things you heard that were important for you in Lisa's story um, is that I, I don't do psychology work the, the body's own reflexes guide the process and your own words your own stories are either uh, showing us the way that it's that's where we need to do the work or we found an idea that we thought was the stressor but isn't really the stressor so we're able to fine-tune where this is and again it's your own body your own reflexes and you get to release it and the, the far side of that I know we get you know tears come and the tissues yeah. come out <laughs> and but what what happens after that session what's that effect definitely relief peace happiness it shifts my 
energy and focus and you don't even realize it but people respond differently to mm. you you know because I've shifted somehow in a you know I guess a energy level type thing I've, I've definitely shifted and the responses I get are, are different my attitudes different my oldest son says you're happier mom mm. you know I'm like oh good <laughs> oh that's a good that's a great one that's, that's a great, a great one. compliment I well know. Fernando over to you you've heard a few things I'm, I know it's a few things probably resonated w what comments come up for you uh, honestly, um, when she's talking, I'm, I'm saying, wow, 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 wow. And that's what I get every time I go to see you. I get wows all over the place, and, and I try to put them in words, and they're, they're very difficult. So mm -hmm. I really, she really put them in words really well. Mm. Um, every single time I go to see you, when I walk out, I'm like, oh, my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> um, so... Everything resonated, but how do you explain it? She, she articulated it very well, but how do you explain it on an individual basis? Is, it's kind of tough. Um, mm. It's just like the words are a miracle. Mm. It, mm. Miracles happen. And if you're, not looking for the, if you're not looking for that, how did it work, you won't see it. You li literally have to be keenly listening to your body, listening to your soul, listening to everything that happens to you for you to see the miracle. And then as you're training yourself throughout the week, you're saying, Wow, I would have never saw that mm -hmm. if, if I wasn't paying attention. Mm. And that's where God is at. That's where miracles happen. That's mm. where beauty happens. And, mm. you know, it, it, my favorite time of the week is go to, meet, go to see you. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Well, what Fernando, I, I believe, is referring to is the conversation that we have in addition to the work that we do. And part of the thing that we're going to be sharing with you as we move forward is learning how to sense the physical body and know that there's a mind component to it. And in that endeavor, we can start to learn more about what we're going through and how we're responding. Though in this work, your, your body is guiding us the way. The test is indicating if we're on the right track or if we're off the right track. And then we do that work. And it's this, as, Le as Lisa put it, there's this freedom. There's this release. And people respond differently. Yes, and, definitely. And tell me some of your experiences. On no, that. we've had, well, every week we come in and we discover something about me that I never knew. Mm. I, I could never, t I could never even think about unless the res the, the, we use the resources that you provide. And the best part of it is that you educate us through the whole process. Mm. And and the parts that you don't listen in your education, you suffer. Because I've had some stories. Um, you know, a couple times I walked into to your office where I was in in, in pain. And you said, but Fernando, I told you this. This was going to happen. <laughs> you tell me exactly what's going to happen. And it happens. It's just like, like on the money. On mm. uh, certain days, something's going to happen. That you tell me how I'm going to be today, why it happened today, why it didn't happen today. Everything, you're always on the money all the time telling me what's next and teaching me what's really happening, mm. which is, I can't put it into words. It's just I'm the rediscovering who I am. And every day that I'm, I'm uh, in your office, I see something I could never see before. Mm. You know, I'm reflecting upon some of our sessions momentarily as, I, as you're saying that. And, you know, there are these nuances and clues that we, we have in our current moment in life. Yet, just like um, uh, Freud talks about, well, these things get formed when we're young and mm. we forget them. Or in some cases, if they're traumatic, our mind blocks them. Uh, and, and it's hard to recall things that occurred before 10 years old for many. I mean, we all have memories of certain moments and things here and there, but we lived a full day, 24 mm -hmm. hours, uh, so, much, so many minutes and so many seconds. And every, every intense emotional experience combined with some type of physical trauma, there's things that get wired in, just like Pavlov's dog, where we ring the bell and the dog yeah. was trained to to uh, be aware that the food was coming when the bell rang, so it automatically started to salivate. Well, that phenomena occurs with us, whether I'm learning the piano, whether I'm learning good habits and manners in public, or, um, or otherwise. We can be conditioned many ways, uh, both positively and or negatively. And many times, and this is things I've uh, had to overcome in my life, is being conditioned that um, I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And this, this is like from things from like baseball practice and football practice where, you know, the motivation was a, more of a beat you up kind of motivation to, to you know, to uh, engage some type of momentum. But sometimes that has a negative effect. And uh, these things get wired in from subtle things, very, very subtle things. 
Yeah. Um, but well, yeah. What's funny with that is, it's not even funny, but you don't realize as an adult, when those things lock in like that, you're responding the same way to that same situation as you were when you were, say, 10 and that happened. Mm. Not even realizing it, kind of on a subconscious level. And so that's where I think you help unlock that subconscious moment and you're like right to the point, like you unlock it and we're done and we move on. Yeah. Yeah. And the response is different. So. I've taken lots of courses at high levels on exactly what you know, but you handle it right then and there mm. and not just one direct way. You go through many different areas where you can feel that you've released. Mm. You've released that emotion mm. forever mm. and you walk out of there peacefully. You were saying with tremendous amount of peace. So yeah. it's not only that you're, you're doing something like Dianetics mm. because a lot of people have read Dianetics. Mm. You're doing it mind, body, and soul all at the same time and you're teaching us this is what's happening. Do you remember this? Oh my God, I never remembered that. Now I remember it and now you're actively saying, okay, forgive yourself. Mm and it just walks away from you. Mm. And you know it's not gonna come back. So it's, it's, it's a combination of all the technology that you have is amazing. Yeah, well thank you so much. And there's ways for you, and this is part of my primary motivation, is to teach you all the at-home ways that you can do this. And of course there's tools and techniques that go along with that. And if someone has a difficult case where they can't find that answer themselves, well then yes, this is something that people can seek me out. Or if you're anywhere in the world, uh, there's people I can refer you to, there's uh, things that we can do over Zoom, of course, and there's a number of different things that can, uh, that can uh, occur. So <laughs> as, as um, well, I think we're going to close off here with this segment, is what kind of advice do you have for people that are in holistic healing already or are looking for answers? Uh, wh what, what would you offer them? I, I do it all the time, and, and I'm glad you're having this series because um, explaining it, I don't know how you feel, it's not the easiest thing to explain. Mm -hmm. And the advice is, if, you're, if you need some type of healing, trust in Dr. Kevin. Thank you. Trust in Dr. Kevin. It might not be in the first one, but I guarantee you that it's going to happen, and it's going to happen the way it's supposed to happen. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much for that affirmation. <laughs> well, es essentially the same question is for people that, you know, there's, they may not equate um, a foot problem with a chiropractor, or right. they may not equate a liver issue, blood pressure, or blood pressure. Right. Um, e even things that have like diabetes and mm -hmm. other significant health concerns, it's not that we're fixing that health concern. We're allowing right. the body to do what? You're about to fill, yeah. you, you know no, what you're right, this. because you're not, because you never address the blood pressure. But what caused the blood pressure to rise? So you get right to the root cause of it, mm. which is, a little different than just treating the symptom with something to make me feel better you know it's like I get right to the root cause we work through it and it did take time mm -hmm. it wasn't like the first time in the first few visits I was like I don't know I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I'm coming back <laughs> and then something shifted I said I'm just gonna trust this process just um, yeah I came for a reason I'm gonna trust Dr. Kevin and just go with it and I know there was a shift I felt a shift and Anybody I think that's stuck in any area of their life or wants to seek, you know, can't quite pinpoint what it is, um, tired of going around the hamster wheel trying to find out what it is, I would definitely recommend this way of healing. I would definitely come to you. I've, I have friends in Texas that I refer to another doctor that's in that area that does the same type of techniques because it's definitely to the point um, when you lock that subconscious, then you're able to move on from that. Mm -hmm. So. Well, the subconscious is so key. Thank you it really for is. the affirmation. And the subconscious uh, is, well, you've seen it. We've all seen iceberg, and there's that little bit floating on top, and that's our thinking mind. That's what mm -hmm. we can reason with. That's our, what, what we are solving our current problems in the moment with. But then that 90%, that subconscious, it connects to all the, the interesting things in life that are comfortable to talk about and some of them uncomfortable to talk <laughs> about. Uh, the hidden meetings behind things and those automatic behaviors that they get stuck with doing. And so our hope is, well, my hope is, and I know Mine too. Um, <laughs> everyone here and everyone you're gonna be seeing is about uh, for helping each other free because there's this, there's this phenomena, it, I like to refer to it as the hunter monkey phenomena. And essentially there's a story where these monkeys were uh, on different islands and they were being studied for some, some purpose mm -hmm. and the researchers were, were um, feeding them potatoes and the potatoes were getting uh, dropped off and, but they would get dirty in the sand. And uh, one group of monkeys, 
a younger group started washing their potatoes and they taught the other monkeys in their tribe on their island to wash th their potatoes. And what the researchers noticed was that at a certain point, a certain threshold, all the monkeys on all the islands were washing their potatoes. Wow. But none of them were teaching the other ones. So there's this collective conscious that mm. it, it, it stimulates uh, an awareness that just takes over, like we see it in animals all the time. And as we bring about greater peace and harmony with ourselves, it helps everybody. All ships rise in the tide. So that's our aim here. So I think we're going to go to commercial break right now. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Lisa, for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Until Thanks next time. <laughs>
be inside of my body comfortably. Mm. And before, if you have a lot of pain or certain areas, you tend to ignore it mm. and you just, you know, occupy your mind with something else by thinking, overthinking and just, but when you can take yourself out of your mind space and bring yourself into your body, then you can actually feel what's going on. And if you release a lot of stuff, then it's very comfortable. But at first it might be uncomfortable and you might have to address some things. Mm. Oh, wow. So that actually gave me a very beautiful to insight. Them, yeah. We live in here. Mm -hmm. As we bring it down to the body, it's not a happy day sometimes. Yeah. And we don't want to be there, right? So we eat too much or we drink or, uh, uh, you know, name it. Even exercise can be a distraction from the real stressor. Uh, I know, Alex, uh, you do a lot of work in, with helping people, both in your, in your nine to five sort of job, but you also life coach people and you help people navigate their own thoughts and their, and their mind. And you have experience, of course, with our care. You know, tell us, tell me more about some of the phenomena that we were just talking about. What, what are your thoughts? Well, definitely, um, I completely agree with being aware of your body and how your mind and your emotions are connected to your body. And that's why I loved reading your book because I can go to the back and be like, all right, I'm having, you know, some, my ears bothering me. Like, mm. so what's going on with that? Instead of thinking there's something wrong with my ear, I'm like, hold on, my body's telling me something. Mm. Am I not in my, am I not present? And so that awareness, then I can say, oh, okay, maybe what I'm hearing right now is not something that I want to hear. Mm. And then going to your book, looking to get some information, it helps me be aware of that. And that way I'm not being driven by any type of pain mm. or trying to ignore it as well. Mm. I mean, I used to have a lot of back spasms and now I've prevented that from happening because I'm aware of the my mind and where my thoughts are and how it's connecting to my body so if i feel a little tension i'm like oh hold on a second mm. what's going on here i'll do the fast technique be a little bit more conscious of what's going on and then connect with my body yeah yeah it's it's such a major point that uh, there's a phrase i love to share and i, I got it from the where i study the issues are in the tissues and our body is literally talking to us. So there's, a, there's a language. There's a language barrier. And though our body talks to us with pain, mm -hmm. there's metaphor that we can help understand the scenario. And then as we learn more about the acupuncture system and how that connects to the central nervous system and how that connects to, well, what's happening in my knee? And there's, a, there's this... You know, there's this same thing going on all the time. There's a physical issue, there's a mental emotional issue, there's a biochemistry issue, all happening right here, right now when that is going on. And, I'm, uh, and what my personal study has been as I observe this is, well, what's the life issue going on at the same time with this that mirrors this? And so that's been part of uh, the journey of discovery here. So Brian, you know, these are, uh, for, some, for some, some newer topics. You know, how did you get into this kind of uh, thinking, this kind of work? I mean, you have been involved in eating well and in, in, yeah, in meditation, meditation yoga. yoga. I was yoga. doing a lot of that before I ever got any kind of chiropractic work, work done. And before I was into that, I was really into like physical, like lifting and, you know, running exercise. So I kind of transitioned from like the workout world. And then I got really into yoga and meditation and just kind of toned it down in that world. And I think that had to do with a lot of injuries mm -hmm. from bad form because mm -hmm. I, I started feeling pain. And I guess I sought out those things to address what was going on with my, my body. Mm. And they do help, like meditation, it really helps a lot. But there's a certain point where you kind of have to like get it corrected physically and you have that component as well. Yeah. Well, so I love, uh, excuse me for cutting you off there. I, I yeah, love no working with Brian because you did a lot of the work, quote unquote, the, for the physical and the mental and nutritional. You did a lot of work coming in before I even met you. And I just remember as you first started, it was like, man, I love this guy when he comes in. It's so easy for me to work with him. Mm -hmm. he, he's, you know, for bodybuilding, there's a certain mindset you have to uh, dedicate yourself to, nutritionally speaking and everything. Though that's hard on the body. It is, yeah. yeah. And now I can feel like, so like I feel different than I did like 10 years ago when I would lift mm. like range of motion the way your my body's supposed to bend like I was so tight and stiff and I thought that's just how it was but right, right. now I knew I was just like you know just building up and not like paying attention to range of motion well, well the, I didn't know how the body could move. I didn't know my neck could like move like that freely like you know I didn't right. until I <laughs> got everything corrected and 
Well, we get, we get used to slowly, and I, I love this story or a little analogy. It's kind of not the most pleasant to talk about, but when we walk into a smelly room, we all smell it right away. But then if you're there for a while, it smells okay. But then if you leave and come back, you're like, what, yeah. <laughs> what just happened? And so, but this is our body. We get yeah. used to it. We get used to it. Yeah, there's, there was like an injury I had, really mm. bad squatting injury in my back. Mm. It was like excruciating pain for like a year. And then all of a sudden it just went away. Yeah. Yeah. And but it, that didn't heal. The injury didn't heal because I think we're still working on that to this day. But <laughs> well, we could you know start to break down your personal situation yeah, yeah. a little more, but maybe a different time. But yeah, you, I feel like you're you just get comfortable in the way yeah. you are, and you're like, oh, this is just how it is, how my body feels, and it doesn't have to be like that. Well, so as we're we're getting to that core thing, and and I know Brian, I think it would be okay if I share it. There's a there's a bone in his mid to low back that I can feel it. it's stuck in that position. The body can't self correct. Though for us to really get to that, there's layers of compensations and other injuries that are on top of it. Mm -hmm. So as we do this natural unwinding process, based on the internal wisdom that took him from mom and dad and sperm and egg, and now we have Brian, big, strong, making music and everything, there's layers and, and complications built on top of old injury. And so, you know, we could really try to push and manipulate that and really try to make it different. Though, what's that doing to all the things that, that that's the body's keeping it there to protect for a reason? So we want to help peel those layers back with the mind and the body and the nutrition and the biochemistry and the toxins. And as we do that, the body gets freer and freer and is able to unlock in, in its proper order and its proper desire that the wisdom within wants to, uh, to, to mm -hmm. acknowledge. Yeah, that's something I learned from you, that there's a specific order of unwinding that everyone's injuries and in spine has, has to go through. Yeah, that unwinding, yes. Yeah. So there's the physical unwinding, and well, we also know there's the, the mental, emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. So as we wake up, and I'll, I'll pass this over to you, as we wake up to our habit patterns, our belief patterns, there's a, there's a game involved for a bit, isn't there, before it becomes wired in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what, you know, some of the, <laughs> you're laughing because... Well, I can only guess, but uh, there, yeah, just I'm um, just thinking back to all our sessions where mm. things were just coming up. I'm like, that's what's been going on. Mm. And like as a, as a life coach, I also have a coach, too. Mm. And when we're doing our sessions, it's just everything is just matching up. And like there is a time and there's a place to resolve something. So I, I noticed the, the synchronicity of all of that. Yeah. Just unwinding. It's, it's a beautiful process. And anyone who's engaged in whether it's that you have a uh, you have a nine to five job and there's somebody helping you along becoming better or you have a life coach uh, or a mentor in some variety there's there's this, this perfection of timing of understanding and expansion of whatever the topic may be and in this case what we're doing is we're investigating you yeah we're yeah. investigating <laughs> how your own mind works with your own life and and there's things that are congruent and there's things that are not congruent you know the, the, one of the most interesting things I was reminded of in my studies is we have three brains our neocortex, our, our thinking brain, the most recent, we have our mammalian brain, we have the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain is all those basic functions of fight or flight and, and food and survival. Mm -hmm. And then there's more, there's, there's more of the human, the human aspect, the emotional realm in that mammalian brain. But our, our thinking is our neocortex. And if something isn't congruent at all those levels, there's chaos in our body. That means there's stress in our body. And that means something's not working as it should or as it could. And therefore, if it's there long enough, well, then it produces a symptom that we, you know, we, then we take action on. But by then, the issue's been ruminating and sitting there for perhaps years, if not decades for some people. Oh, that a third grade incident where I got tripped and I dropped my food and was embarrassed. And now I'm embarrassed when I'm 50 years old or 40 years old, whatever that may be, to be out in public with food or whatever that, that scenario could be. Yeah. There's these wild connections where we do to protect ourselves and to survive. And sometimes we're not even in the thrive component. We're just survival mode. Yeah. And, that we need, and, and this is where I see the stress really building up in people is that well, there, uh, and you at home, tell me if you agree with this, there's more stress now in our society than ever, and people are having a harder and harder time handling that stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned the FAST technique. Brian, what is something that you felt has been something, a great tool for you to use at home, and we'll explain it at a different time, but um, put you right on the spot there. Tapping the was tapping. something you, you told me about that mm -hmm. really helped in a lot of situations. Yeah. 
and the fast technique is at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. and that's the, the new one that I like that as well. Yeah. So were you talking about using our physical body to uh, essentially use the back door into our subconscious to help release mm -hmm. tension and release stress? And there's a number of ways to do it. Yeah, and usually with the like tapping, it's, I find myself just set, like saying, reciting positive affirmations like yeah. over and over. And well, Brian's doing some and others and advanced that. work. And you can kind of feel as you like tap in different areas, it just kind of leaves you. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Brian left it perfectly. Thank you. We want you to help release that stress, mm -hmm. live that better life, live a higher quality life for you and your loved ones. And it's about being authentic. It's about creating the best thing you can with what you have. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm Dr. Kevin Jarina. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Alex, for your time Thank you. and support today. Thank and you. I look forward to you joining us for more episodes as we do interviews, panel discussions, demonstrations, tools and techniques for you to empower yourself and loved ones at home. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in.